the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. The way I figure, Bill, is just up ahead. That's about the most likely spot, Stumpy. He always was a feller who'd make the most of an opportunity. Uh, it'll be good seeing him again. Well, we'll soon see if he's here. Right around the turn. <laughs> Looks like something's going on up ahead. Unless I miss my guess, it's the construction of Lloyd Adams' cabins. Yeah, pull in. Let's see if Lloyd's around. <laughs> you don't think I'd drive all the way out here... Just to see if there really were cabins being built here, do you? Yeah, I reckon not. Hold on now. <laughs> I haven't laid eyes on Lloyd for a good many years. And I'd say that feller over there looks a lot like Lloyd used to. Mm-hmm, so would I. He's coming this way. Let's get out. Huh, oh, Bill and Stumpy. I reckon that <laughs> is Lloyd. <laughs> Well, what a nice surprise. Hello, Lloyd. Howdy. After all these years. <coughs> you, you know, you two fellows haven't changed a bit. Well, grown a little shorter, maybe. Or possibly you've grown a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was a lot younger when we used to go on hikes and do camp and all. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many times I've thought of those days. Some of the most fun I've ever had was with you and the other kids, you know. Well, we're still taking young'uns out on them hikes and things, Lloyd. Uh, you'll have to come and join one of them just for old time's sake. <laughs> well, I might just take you up on that, Stumpy. Well, to what do I owe the honor of this visit, hmm? Oh, we heard that you had moved back into town. We we're starting to build these tourist cabins out here, Lloyd. After giving you what we thought was enough time to come and visit us, we decided to take the initiative ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you know, I must have thought at least three times every day about stopping by the ranger station to say hello, but there always seems to be so much to do. Well, I'm sure of that. This looks like a large-sized project you've got on your hands. <laughs> you know, I had no idea when I started this tourist court that it would take so much work. But when it gets finished and people start making use of it, It'll be worth it. You certainly sound settled for a young man, Lloyd. Why not? Uh, you know, a lot of guys go to college and play around trying to find some kind of mission in life. Me? I pretty well have the goods on life, and the sooner I get into a nice operating business, the sooner I'll ease up paying bills and start making money. By the time I'm ready to retire, I suspect to have a good-sized egg to sit on. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. Would you like to have a look around? Yeah, sure would. Well, come on. I'll show you the inside story on where Naughty Pine's best cared for tourist will be staying in the near future. Well, there isn't a whole lot more than just holes in the ground here, but... At least you've seen the general layout. Come on back when the cabins are really on their way out, huh? It's been very interesting, Lloyd. Sure has. You've uh, got a good location here, right on the highway. I was lucky to get it. I uh, don't know whether you know this or not, Lloyd, but one of the few remaining buffalo herds in the country uh, runs near here, over in uh, that direction. Oh, that's so? You'll probably be seeing a lot of them before you're ready to retire. Say, that's a real attraction, isn't it? I mean, there aren't that many buffalo running around these days. They're just about all gone. 
Allen. Except for zoos that managed to keep them coming in small numbers. Maybe with enough uh, play on this attraction, I, I can up the prices a bit. Um, Lloyd. Yeah, Bill? Ever since we arrived here this afternoon, I've been noticing one very big change about you. <laughs> I know. And before I'm done, I'll probably be completely bald. Oh, I wasn't thinking about your hairline. Oh. Well, uh, it's a bit intangible, but uh, at one time, anyway, you were more interested in helping people. Now you seem to be doing about the same things, but you have a lot more interest in the money end of things. Uh, you used to try to tell us fellows about how we should be true and good, the genuine article. I found out since that there's no such thing as the genuine article. As long as you look all right, that's all that really matters. Uh, Lloyd, we used to put it a lot more simply when you were younger, but now you seem to have grown up, so here it is right on the line. The whole essence of what sin is, according to God's word, is self-centered living. Putting yourself before God. It doesn't matter whether you do so-called good things or bad things. It does matter why you do them. Oh, trapped yourself, Bill. You mean I could do uh, bad things for God? If you were living your life for God, that wouldn't even be a question. The point is, young fella, with all your professional kindness and stuff, if you aren't serving God with your life, doing what you're doing for His glory... Even the so-called good things you do turn out to be sins. Because you're doing them for selfish reasons. Ah, all that fine gibberish about serving God is swell when you're a kid. But this is the only life I really know anything about, Bill. And I aim to make the most of it. If and when I face God or anything like that, and he sees that I've never really done anybody any harm, I figure I'll stand as good a chance as anybody else. Well, now I have to get back to work. You fellows will excuse me. Um, thanks for stopping by. Well, there he goes, just like that. A man who will be everything the world calls a nice guy, yet completely ignoring the most important responsibility we all have, the responsibility to our creator. I wonder if in God will let him get away with this, Bill. I mean, uh, Lloyd does know the truth, even if he don't follow it. I don't know, Stumpy. That's entirely in the hands of God. I'll get him. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Oh, hello, Bryce. No, we haven't been getting any strange reports. Why? Uh huh. A what? Oh, sure, I've heard of one before, but he's been dead for several years. No, Bryce, I don't believe in ghosts. Besides, if this fellow was one, he'd be way out of his territory. The one I've heard of roamed up in Montana. Well, thanks for letting us know. Yes, we'll check it out as soon as we can. There really is such an animal running around. Uh, we've got a real history maker on our hands. Right. Thanks again, Bryce. Bye now. Well, ain't you going to let me in on that? Hmm? Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Stumpy. I was just thinking. Strange reports. Dead a number of years. Ghost, Montana, history maker. Even that ain't just about the most curiosity fire and collection of words I ever heard you say over the phone. I don't know what is. <laughs> Very strange, old timer. You remember a buffalo named Big Medicine? Well, I can't say he's ever got real chummy with any buffalo. I'm serious, Stumpy. Big Medicine was an unusual buffalo. He was considered the king of the National Bison Range herd up in Montana. See, I do remember, now that you mention it, uh, the thing that made him so spectacular was that he was a white buffalo, wasn't that it? Right. As far as anyone knew, he was the only albina buffalo alive. Soon after he died, he was put on display in the Montana Historical Museum in Helena. I think he's still there today. 
What do you mean, I think? Well, that was Bryce Russell on the phone. He said that a couple of people have stopped in at his gas station with the news that they've seen a white buffalo leading the herd that runs south of Naughty Pine. A white one? That's what he said. You know, it's funny, though. What's the matter? When was the last time we were out to look at that herd of buffalo? Well, I can't rightly recall. Not more than a month, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I knew it hadn't been long. And I know we didn't see anything like a white buffalo leading the herd at that time. If there really is a white buffalo leading that herd, he's just joined them. But where would he come from? There ain't another herd of buffalo for miles near here. Yeah, I know. That's why it seems to me to be a good idea to go out there to the run and see if we can find that herd. Let's go. I forgot about Lloyd Adams' cabins being right here along the run. Maybe he can tell us when the herd passed through the last time, which way they were going. Yeah, good idea. That looks like construction's coming along well in the cabins. Yeah, they're sure going up in a hurry. They, uh... Hey, Bill. Look at yonder. Mm-hmm. Just caught my eye, too, old timer. That must be the sign Lloyd's planning to hang out in front. But look at what he's going to call this place. The White Buffalo Cabins. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? I've been looking for a good name for the place ever since I got the idea. What do you think of it? Well, it has to do with the very thing we came here to see you about, Lloyd. Oh? Where'd you get the idea of calling this place here in the White Buffalo? Oh, I didn't know it was a crime. What's the matter? It's not a crime, Lloyd. We're just curious, that's all. Well, I got the idea in an obvious enough way. I uh, finally saw that herd of buffalo you told me about. Uh-huh. And I noticed that the leader of the herd was a white buffalo. Well, naturally, I figured as long as a white buffalo was a good enough leader for that herd, might be a good enough leader for a tourist cabin. You know what I mean. Now, you tell me what all the official looks are about. Well, as far as we know, Lloyd, until last month, that herd wasn't led by or didn't even have a white buffalo. As a matter of fact, the only white buffalo on record in recent times has been dead for several years. It's on display in Helena, Montana. Huh. You think that one might be a ghost? We were just impressed with the way you named your place about the same time as he first appeared. Hey, now, wait a minute. I told you where I got that name. If that white fellow out there is something new around here, I... I don't know anything about it. We aren't accusing you of anything, Lloyd. Actually, all we're interested in is seeing that buffalo ourselves. Why? To confirm reports. Say, uh, I just happened to think. You might be able to help us, Lloyd. Me? As I remember, you used to be pretty good with a rope. Didn't you win some prizes at the Naughty Pine Rodeo in branding competition? Well, I... Say, that's right. I never seen a fella who could knock over a big bull the way you could and hold him while he was being autographed. Oh, uh, that was some time ago. Well, you're still looking in condition. Why don't you ride out with us and see if we can find that white beast? Well, uh, frankly, Bill, uh, because I can't. Huh? What are you talking about? Well, that... That's why I've been sitting here talking to you. I took a pretty bad fall yesterday, and well, I'm afraid I'm in no condition to even walk, let alone ride. Oh, that's too bad, Lloyd. You had a doctor look at it? No, I'm just bruised up a bit, that's all. No sense in bothering a doctor for something like that. Um, mind if we uh, take you up on your offer of a week back and look around? No, go ahead. I'd like to show you around, but... No, it's all right. We understand. We'll try to remember where you said everything was going. Come on, Stumpy. Let's have a look around. But the white buffalo! You'll uh, stay out there for a while yet. Let's take a look at the white buffalo cabin. <laughs> Now, will you 
tell me what you're thinking about. We're supposed to be checking on that white buffalo, not paying social call. Stumpy, there's something strange going on here. Huh? Did you see the way Lloyd was holding his leg? I'm sure his leg is broken. Broken? That's right. Now, why would a man with a broken leg stay away from a doctor? <laughs> yeah, you got me. Maybe because he didn't want anyone to know how the leg was broken. Hey, what are you getting at, young feller? Uh, just a minute. Let's uh, talk with that workman over there. Uh, excuse me. Huh? You want to talk to me? Just to ask you how things are going, that's all. We're friends of Mr. Adams. Oh, they're going okay, I guess. You guess? Maybe I shouldn't say this, you being his friends and all, but he sure don't care much about what he's putting up. What do you mean by that? Well, he just goes too far saving money, that's all. The stuff he buys for us to work with, a lot of it's poor grade. The way he wants us to put these things up. Well, I wouldn't want to be living out here in a strong wind. Have you mentioned this to him? Oh, sure. All he says is, just so it looks good. That's what's important. Make it look good. So what can you do? I got to eat, same as anybody. That seems to be the way Lloyd is about everything. Now, what did he say to us, Stumpy? Uh, as long as it looks like the genuine article, that's all that matters. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, I hope you won't go telling him I told you this. Like I say, I got to eat, same as anybody. That's why you'll do a job you know is bad, huh? Look, mister, it ain't my worry what he does with these things. I just build them the way he tells me. My hands are clean. I'd think about that a little more if I were you. Hey, uh, I thought you said you was his friends. Does uh, Mr. Adams help you out much on the job? Some. Why? I suppose that fall he had will slow things up a bit. Fall? When he hurt his leg. Uh, Look. Didn't he fall? I, I don't know how he hurt his leg. All I know is he rode out of here yesterday, and he wasn't back by the time I knocked off. I don't know where he went or what he was planning to do with them bottles. <laughs> bottles? Hey, what are you asking me all this for? You want to know about what happened to him? Why don't you ask him? I got to get back to work. Say, what's going on here? It's beginning to fit together, isn't it, old-timer? If you think what I think you're thinking, you're thinking the same things I'm thinking. <laughs> Come on. I'll try to figure that one out while we look for the white buffalo. Trail's getting fresher by the minute, Bill. I noticed that too, Stumpy. We should be coming upon them any time now. Hey, look up ahead. Rising over the trees. Ain't that dust? That yeah, sure is. The kind of large herd makes as it moves along. Come on, Storm. Giddy up! My eyeballs are playing tricks on me. That lead bull's as white as a polar bear in a snowstorm. Let's get a better look. These binoculars ought to move us in real close. Well, what's it look like close up, Bill? At first look, he seems to be the real thing, Stumpy. But, uh... Well, here. You take a look. He's a real buffalo, all right. And a big one at that. But uh, what do you notice about him that seems out of place? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, all his legs are in the right place. Uh, so is his head. Uh, yep, there's his tail. <laughs> That's not what I mean, old-timer. Take a look at his eyes. His eyes? That's right. Well, uh, I'm looking at them. But they don't do a thing to me. But look at what color they are. What color? You gone loco? They're the dark. That's all I can tell from here. What's that got to do with anything? Now, think a minute, Stumpy. Think of all the albino animals you've ever seen. What is the one characteristic about the eyes of an albino that marks him as distinct? Say, that's right. 
Albino animals have pink eyes. And that so-called white buffalo has dark eyes. Then he's a fake. That's what it looks like. At least we have enough to go back and have a talk with Lloyd Adams about. Look, I'm not feeling like entertaining company. Why don't you fellows come back sometime in the distant future, huh? This won't take long, Lloyd. I've just come from seeing the white buffalo. So, now that you're satisfied that there is such an animal, why don't you go on out and... You're, uh... We're far from satisfied that there is such an animal, Lloyd. Well, you said that you just saw it. What else do you want? I want to know exactly what happened to your leg yesterday. (laughs) I... I told you I... I fell while I was working around here. Your workman doesn't remember anything about it. You've been snooping? Hey, what is this? I think you know, Lloyd. It looks to me like you decided to really put that herd of buffalo to work for you, so you rode out and tried some of your old rodeo technique on the leader. Once you had him tied, you bleached him white. See, that's right. That workman said something about bottles. Then... After you turned him into a white buffalo, you let him go. I suppose it was then that he turned on you and broke your leg. How did you... I mean... I can recognize a broken leg when I see it, Lloyd. I've seen enough of them. Well, isn't that about the way it happened? Look, Bill, I've taken about enough. You come charging in here with a lot of accusations that you can't prove. For all anybody knows, there really is a white buffalo out there leading that herd. And if the last one was so famous, this one will be too. And bring a lot of business to the cabins that overlook the buffalo run, huh? (sighs) I'll profit from it, sure. Anybody would. You think it's worth that broken leg? I didn't know I was going to... Look, get out of here, will you? I... I don't feel like listening to any more. It's interesting, isn't it? When a man sets himself up as the center and reason for all that he does, even the so-called best slip easily to fraud, to lying, to cheating. That's enough, Bill. You fake a white buffalo to draw clientele into poorly made cabins for higher prices. And yet all the time you try to keep up appearances. You might even get rich that way. I said shut up! But God created us to be his followers, Lloyd. He sent Jesus to die for us just because we wouldn't follow him. Don't talk God to me. You think I don't see right through you, Bill. If you can't make a reputation in money, you can make a reputation in religion, huh? Well, to me, it's all the same thing. Only I'll have more to show for it. Now you get out of here, and I mean get! It's hard to believe that that's the same Lloyd Adams that used to go on hikes with us when he was still in school. I know what you mean, old-timer. If only we knew ahead of time the direction men's lives are going to go, we'd certainly treat them differently when they were children. Maybe the way around that would be to spend careful time bringing up every child. Maybe so. Well, we might as well drive back to town. No matter how hard I try, I can't think of a thing we can do right now to help Lloyd. Well, I reckon. Right now, at least, the only thing to do is to keep on praying for him. I guess so. Yeah. Hmm. What's the matter, Bill? That herd of buffalo. I know. I saw them coming around the edge of the woods over there. But they're way too far this way. The run is usually over at the foot of the mountain. Maybe they're just a little off course. No, they're being led this way. Look, they're heading straight for Lloyd's cabins. That white leader must still be mad. They'll be here in no time at all. What are we going to do, Bill? Start the car, Stumpy. Get ready to pull out right away. I'm going to get Lloyd. I thought I told you to get out. No time to argue, Lloyd. That herd of buffalo is headed straight for these cabins. What? Who are you trying to fool? It looks like that buffalo you died isn't through with you yet. Come on. We've got to get out of here. You'll have to do better than that, Bill. You know I can't run with this busted leg. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to save your life. Come on now. I'll help you. Stay where you are. Trying to save my life or 
trying to get back at me. What are you talking about? I see straight through you, Bill. You can't take the kind of talk I gave you before I threw you out of here. Well, I don't know why you want me outside so badly, but I'm not going. Save my life after what I just said and did to you? <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. Bill, hurry up! Oh, oh, so you've got Stumpy in on it, too, huh? Stumpy's got the car running. To run me over? Time's up, Lloyd. If you won't let me help you, I'll have to carry you out. I said stay put, Bill. I don't want to have to hit you. You can't fight with a broken leg, Lloyd. I don't throw punches with my feet. One more step and you'll see what I mean. Bill! I hate to take advantage of you, Lloyd. No, you don't! (laughs) Sorry, Lloyd. Now to get out of here. With you. Here, here we go. It's Hamble in the cabin! Quick, get in! better, Lloyd? Yeah. Thanks, but I can't figure it out. I I just can't figure it out. What's that? You could have left me there. You could have just pulled away. That herd could have trampled me to death, and no one would ever have suspected that you could have rescued me. Stumpy and I would have known. (laughs) After what I said to the two of you, and especially when I wouldn't even come with you when you did try to get me... It just doesn't make sense. Well, it does. When you remember the third person that would have known... Huh? God. If he just got rid of everyone who fought him, we'd all be gone by now, Lloyd. But God cares for all of us. The just and the unjust. And he sent Jesus to live and die for each of us. He cares for each of us. And as his followers, we couldn't do less. It just doesn't add up. Of course it don't, Lloyd. That's the whole point of accepting God's gift to being saved by Jesus' death. Once a fellow does that, God's own spirit enters into him and makes him a new creature. He thinks as different as he acts. And it ain't natural, it's supernatural. You really are serious, aren't you? I mean, you really do care about God and about others. Even me. That's right. <laughs> Looks like a lot of my ideas were trampled along with those cabins... Okay, Bill, I'm listening. Start over again, and this time, maybe I'll start believing what you have to say. It doesn't take too much work to only look good, boys and girls, but Jesus works in us to make us really good for his sake. Lloyd and the others like him could shatter the phony goodness of man... But no one living can stand up against the holiness that God gives his child. We hope you know what it is to really follow him. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Roger Bill! Ranger Bill is produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. 